And then, so they booked me. And uh, I don't know if you've heard of Bruiser Brody. Yes. Yes. Tough guy. Uh, in anybody's standards back then, especially, is my first match. Right. So, <laughs> now I, I'm a pretty respectful guy. And, 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 and I'm sure in any industry, you know, even when you, you know, a new comic, you, you pay respect to the older guy. I mean, that's just the way it should be and, it, and the way it really was back then, especially. You know, in, in our business, you know, you just you didn't say much. You spoke when spoken to, kind of deal. And uh, so I, I'm Bruiser Brody. Bruiser Brody's my first professional match, right? So wow. I don't know. I'm twenty, twenty one maybe, and uh, I'm you know I'm in the ring and I'm looking at him. I'm like, fuck, I'm bigger than he is. This is the shit that's going on in my head, right? Now, I'm so nervous. Like, you couldn't have drove a nail up my ass with a sledgehammer. I'm so nervous to start with. But I'm looking like that that, that stupid voice in the back of my head's like, you're fucking bigger than he is. You know, because Bruiser Brody was bigger than life, man. He had all that hair, and he was just fucking, he was just a man. He was an animal, right? So, fucking, with bell rings, and I, boom, I tie up with him, collar and elbow, and, you know, I jam him up into a corner you know he's hey kid lighten up a little bit kid you know relax but i'm just like i mean my body's like angle iron right i'm so just Whoa. anyway so i go to shove him and my hands you know we're, we're kind of hand fighting a little bit and my hand slips off and i kind of you know i kind of palm him in the in the in the face the temperature in the room changed a little bit at that moment <laughs> we so we tie up again and I'm about to shoot him across the ring and I gotta shoot him across the ring and I'm yelling like I'm gonna hit him with a clothesline so as I tell him clothesline right and he comes off the ropes like like a bullet like a six foot five 300 pound bullet and he kicks me square in my fucking jaw <laughs> my eyes my eyes roll back in my head and Next thing I know, he's grabbing me. He's like, let's go for a walk, right? So he throws me out of the ring and uh, throws me down on this table. And, and the, this place called the Sportatorium in Dallas, they've torn it down now. But they had the folding chairs that had, they were metal, but then they had the wood slats. Fuck. He takes this chair as hard as he can. You know, and not the, we're not talking about the metal folding chairs, which hurt enough in their own right when you get hit enough times with them. He swings as hard as he can. This chair just fucking explodes. Wood slats fly all over the place. I'm thinking I've, I'd, I'd never been hit so hard, man. I'd been hit, you know, but I'd never been hit that hard by anything at that point. He throws me back in the ring, ties me all up in the ropes, right? I'm greener and shit. Don't know what the hell I'm doing. And he just starts <laughs> hitting the other ropes and coming and just kicking me as hard as he can in the head. Wow. Oh, my God. And I deserved it. I, you know, I mean, he was giving me a lesson that I needed to learn. Anyway, a couple of minutes later, boom, he pins me. And, you know, that was it. We go back, you know, we go back to the dressing room. And I'm like, holy shit, I just got the shit kicked out of me. And uh, I went over to him. I was like... Mr. Brody, thank you. You know, he said, "All right, kid, just you know, relax next time, will you?" And I was like, "Yes, sir. I, I just appreciate you know being in the ring with you." And you know, went back off in my corner to kind of gather where I was, and you know, and I could oh, over him telling you know, the promoter, he's like, "Fuck, you ought to you ought to book this kid some more." They were trying to find some place else to send me. He said, "That kid, that kid's going to be something," and. uh but, you know, they, at the time, they, I was too green. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, so I had to go somewhere else. But that was my first my first uh, introduction into into wrestling, and I, I got thumped pretty good. Isn't it crazy when you think back of the days in the gym when you were getting ready to go play basketball, if you didn't meet that guy? Yeah. Who knows where you would have gone? Um, yeah, I, I would have probably tried to make a team somewhere, but I don't, you know, I don't think that would have lasted because I wasn't real – you know, I mean, my, I was limited. I mean, I wasn't, <laughs> you know, my isn't game it, was limited enough. I, I would have probably ended up in the military, I'm pretty sure. Isn't it crazy how life just 
Yeah. I mean, do you ever think about that? I like, think about it all the that time. One dude was like your doorway. Yeah. To a different life, to a, a becoming a superstar. Yeah. There's one guy. You run into one guy in your life. Yep. It changes your direction. And then all of a sudden, you become wildly successful at this other thing that you were not even really considering. Yeah, it, it, it's nuts. Yeah. And, and just the fact, you know, that I went to and sat in that, lo- you know, sat in that lobby for eight, eight months. Eight months. And, you know, it was at the end. I, I was like, fuck, this is getting me nowhere. But and then see, just one day. That is what people need to hear, man. In this day and age, everybody wants everything to happen right away. Yeah. You know? That, that is. Everybody's got that sense, one, the sense of entitlement. Mm-hmm. And figure they're owed something. Yeah. And, you know, and aren't willing to put in the grind. Yeah. And, you know, I tell people, you know, yeah, I was, I was living in my car. Yeah. You know, sometimes I could stay with my brother, but there was a lot of nights I had to sleep in a, in a, in a Monte Carlo with fucking, you know, it's six foot eight and 315 pounds is not real comfortable. 